students today we will be having a very interesting topic that is examination of the gait and muscle bulk and tone so this is a part of motor system examination and in a motor system examination if the patient is ambulatory we describe the gait of the patient and if the child is non ambulatory then in that case we describe the posture of the patient so the learning objective of this presentation will be that at the end of this presentation the students will be familiar with the method of performing the motor system and to apply the principles of the motor system examination in the next clinical encounter so what are the components of motor system examination so it is very simple that we have around seven components of motor system examination the first is called as the gait in ambulatory patients and posture in non ambulatory patients then we describe the bulk of the muscles then we describe the tone power deep tendon reflexes superficial reflexes and abnormal movement if they are any so it is very simple seven titles gait or the posture bulk tone power deep tendon reflexes superficial reflexes and abnormal movement so remember that these are the seven components of motor system examination let's move on the first thing we do is examination of the station now station means how i am standing right a normal person or a normal child will stand erect with the head up and chest out and abdomen in right this is the manner in which the person is going to stand so how the child is standing is also going to determine a lot of information into the motor system examination so how do you test this motor system station right so station means basically the manner in which the person is standing so you ask the child to stand with the feet closed together with eyes open and then eyes closed one foot at a time on the toes on the heels and then ask the patient to do tandem walking right similarly at the same time when the patient is standing you give a gentle push and see whether the child is falling down or not right so station is basically to be tested in a manner in which the child is standing so when you are looking at the station look at the station how the child is standing ask the child to stand with the feet closed together right so if the patient is going to stand with the feet wide apart then you know that oh this is a wide based stance right the second thing that you do is ask the patient to stand with the eyes closed the moment the child closes the eye the child falls down this is romberg sign which is an indicator of posterior column dysfunction similarly if the patient has a very very subtle hemiplegia when you ask the patient to stand on one feet at a time then if my left feet is hemiplegic then i will not be able to stand on this but on the other side i will be able to stand first thing that you do is one foot at a time and then you ask the child to stand at the another foot at a time then the fourth thing that you ask is ask the child to stand on the toes right if the patient has a plantar flexion weakness then obviously the child will be unable to stand on the toes similarly if there is a dorsiflexor weakness right the, the child cannot stand on the heels correct if the child has some kind of coordination issues then the child will have difficulty in tandem walking correct if the patient is ataxic then even with a very gentle push the child is going to fall down right so a lot of information can come once you assess the station of the child as to how the child is standing so what can happen what can all go wrong right if a patient is standing on a broad base you know that there is something wrong in cerebellar patients in cerebellar lesion the child will be standing on a broad base if it is only one side of the cerebellar hemisphere it is getting affected so the child will sway on one side this swaying and standing on the broad base will be present both with eyes open and with eyes closed so that means there will be no effect once the child closes the eyes right 
but if it is a vestibular lesion the child will have suppose i have a right sided vestibular lesion my head will be tilted towards that affected side and the chin will be rotated towards the normal side right and most of the time you will realize that the shoulder is high and it is in front in the affected side so this is how a patient is going to stand with a vestibular lesion a patient similarly with a left sided vestibular lesion will be having a head tilt towards the left side the chin will be deviated towards the opposite side the shoulder left shoulder will be high the left shoulder will be in front right so from the stance itself and look at the head tilt itself you can start judging where could be the problem 